Little Big Planet 2 took the gameplay of the series to new heights by introducing many brand new power-ups, such as the Grappling Hook, Grabinator, Creatinator, and Controlinator, which all often primarily require the R1 button to swing, hold objects, fire projectiles, and control many different vehicles. Keeping in mind that the R1 button still allows the player to grab objects normally, let's try to finish the game with the least number of actions that result from the R1 button being pressed. But first we need to set out some rules. We can easily count whenever we use a grab, grapple, or hold something with the grabinator, but for the creatinator, it has the ability to both fire a single shot or several with one press of the R1 button. So because of the levels where we're shooting something like water, we probably won't want to count each individual shot. It would be a good idea to just straight up count every single press of the R1 button, but this can be easily abused by using another button to interrupt what we're currently doing, even though we're still pressing R1, then letting go of the other button, where the action that we were doing then resumes, getting multiple uses out of a single R1 press. So instead, we'll count each individual use or action that comes from using the R1 button, meaning we'll count every grab, grapple, and grabinator hold that we use, regardless of what buttons we're pressing. This way, constantly firing with the creatinator, or doing something with the controlinator with the button held, will only count towards one action. It'll only be when our inputs get interrupted, like from a cutscene, dying, or anything else, where another action will be counted. So we can constantly fire water, or do several ground pounds with the rabbit vehicle, using only one action, so long as we're holding R1 the entire time, and our inputs don't become disabled. We're also going to be doing this on a brand new save file, so we won't be able to use the sticker switches that I found in a few of the levels. But now that we have our rules, we can start the first level, Introduction. Like always, the first level of the game is extremely easy as it just introduces us to a few basic mechanics. We can simply walk to the end, and then put our costume on once reaching the pod. The next level, Rookie Test, is just another type of tutorial, and while there's a lot of practice with bounce pads and stickers, we can finish quite easily without issues. Grab and Swing is where some of the challenges start to appear since we're finally being taught about grabbing, but the first few obstacles can be avoided by using our body to push everything around. After making it down the hill, this gap can't be jumped across, but falling into this pit reveals these two bounce pads, which can actually get us up there. We can't do the same for the next cap though because it's too big to jump. But by jumping down in the perfect way, we can actually get pushed up by the cover that reveals the bounce pads to get launched back up to the main path. Now we can enter the level link and start the second part of this level where we're immediately given the first power up, the grappling hook. But despite our efforts so far, this door doesn't open until we grapple onto this sponge, so we'll add our first action to the counter. Afterwards, we're given the same obstacles as before, and we can again use the bounce pads to clear the first gap. For the second one, we can do the same thing as before, we just need to jump in a different way. Once we get up, there's another sponge that has to be grabbed because the platform is too high. But for the trapdoor that follows it, there's a tiny gap that we can actually fall through to get past. Once the race starts, we can get away with only grabbing one of the sponges to get over the electricity. But to climb up the next part, we have to use two more grapples. Then finally we use another two to get to the scoreboard, finishing with seven grapples in total. With the next level being titled Gripple Grapple, I think we can expect to run into more problems like we were just facing. The first couple obstacles can be platformed through pretty easily, but at the set of three sponges, we need to grapple onto one of them, and then another at the two big arms. We can jump across the next sponges to get across because of how low they are, and then most of the next ones can be stood on as well, after we grapple onto one of them to start us off. The next obstacle is jumped over entirely, with us using a grapple to ascend the next section, where our speed can actually be combined with the bounce pad to skip the next sponge. But we grapple onto the second one. Then we need to use another grapple right after, but thankfully the next few obstacles aren't an issue with the right movement. Like before, we're going to be grappling onto the first punch here, then jump across the rest. Another grapple is used to cross a large gap, then another to get through here. This next wall is too high to jump, but we can actually use the previous punch to just fly on top here, where we can then jump to the level link and start part 2, which thankfully isn't as long. We start with a single grapple that gets us past these three by landing on top of one of them. We are able to lose a lot of speed by running into this sponge to not die. Then the next gap is jumped, but two grapples are used to get around this part. A single grapple gets us through this entire long section, where we then find these closed platforms. It's possible to just get enough speed to make it onto the first one while opening it at the same time. Then the last section uses at least another two grapples to clear. Finally, we pull the lever to reach the scoreboard, with a total of 17 grapples for this level. If there was any level that was going to give us a lot of grapples, it was this one, but hopefully the rest of this world will treat us better. Bravery Test has many required grabs throughout it. 
but since the scoreboard is actually right at the beginning, we'll focus on that instead. Normally Da Vinci tricks you by having a wall appear as you try to touch it, forcing you to go around the long way. But not surprisingly, by using a speedrunning trick involving a player grabbing another, called a co-op jump, we can easily jump over the entire wall, finishing with only one grab from doing this trick. Final Test finishes off the world with the first boss fight, which involves us pulling a few levers and using the grappling hook. The two levers at the start can be barely pushed down using only our body, or after then pushing a button, get lifted back up for us to pull down again, except now we can use the back layer to make it much easier. After doing this again, we're given the grappling hook and the lever moves too high for us to jump up to, except for one, where if we stand on it before it starts going upwards, we can still push it down without needing to grab or grapple. However, we will need to use the grappling hook to get the other one. Finally, one last grapple is used to defeat the boss, finishing the level with only two grapples. We're now introduced to the Grabinator right at the beginning of the next world with Runaway Train, where a box blocks our path immediately. We can actually get on top of it though, and push it out of the way. And same with the next boxes, we can just push them into place. The next boxes are pretty much already in the right place as well, where we just jump off them to reach the button. In the next section though, the button is too high to reach, so we need to throw one of the jams to hit it. Even though the next button is covered in electricity, we can actually still press it by jumping up and dying. Except, for whatever reason I had trouble hitting it for the last time, but it's easy to push the cake out of the way. We have a pretty big problem here since we have to lift up six of the cakes to reach the bottom of this part, since the gas is too high to jump over, so we'll take the six for now. These enemies can't actually hurt us, but to avoid the gas on the next ones, we can use a second player to throw us over them completely, adding one grabinator to use instead of two that would have been used for the jam. The fire enemies can actually be killed with our bodies alone. Then for the last jam section, we can actually just barely fire boost over to the button. Lastly, all of the mini boss's brains can be hit just by using the bounce pad, where we then push the lever and finish with eight uses of the grabinator. Brainy Cakes also uses the grabinator throughout the whole level, but this one's a lot simpler. There are multiple areas that spawn cakes for us that we're meant to use to throw and use as zip lines, but we can actually just pick up one cake at the start and use it for nearly the entire level, being able to make it past everything without letting go. We can even reach the brains on the enemies like this. The point where we do have to let go is on this rail, so we can reach the bounce pad. After this we grab one more cake and finish the rest off with it, counting two Gravenator users for the entire level. The Cakeinator gives us our first use of the Creatinator power up which fires out one cake at a time for us to traverse obstacles. Instead of dealing with the first part, we can use a cake to get into the back layer so we can walk behind everything. Then we use another cake to lower the bridge and get up the wall. A super tight jump can be made here so we can skip using another cake. But right after, we have to use two to get up to where the conveyor belt is. Where another tight jump lets us drop down to the bottom safely, avoiding another cake. We can't jump this fire, so we'll use a cake to get across. Then instead of lowering both of these bridges, We'll make it on top of the first one using the enemy, then lower the second bridge to jump across. Then we can use another to stop the wood from pushing us out. Sometimes the enemy jumps super high for some reason, which might help in skipping both of these cakes, but nothing has been proven yet. Next there are two walls that we normally need help to get over, but a special jump can let us get past both of them, until reaching an even taller wall, where we need to use a cake to get past. The rest of the level is just a matter of well-timed platforming. Except here where the range of this checkpoint is actually large enough for us to activate it without getting up. Finally we can climb across the scales and finish with 8 creator shots. Current Affairs doesn't actually feature any power-ups and is entirely dependent on our skills in avoiding crabs. We can walk through until getting to this point, where the bounce pads don't launch us high enough to go over the sponge, forcing us to grab it. Then majority of the level is actually pretty straightforward. It's all just platforming and timing movement with cycles, until reaching another sponge. This time we can actually swing it around a bit and get a jump to go over the entire thing. After this it's more basic navigation, until reaching the very end, where we need to pull out this plug in order to reach the scoreboard, finishing this level with two grabs. We can now end the world with Kling Klong, another boss fight, which primarily uses the Grabinator. In the first phase, we can spawn multiple cakes and then stack them up high enough so we can actually reach all of the brains without needing to throw any. Then in the second phase, we can get a cake onto this little ledge, which is just enough for us to jump and reach the brains, letting us move to the final phase while still being at zero. Here we have some bounce pads that we can use, and thankfully they actually bounce us high enough to reach the brains without using any more cakes, completing this level without any grabs or uses of the Grabinator. Starting the next world, 
Maximum security begins with the grappling hook section, where we'd have to grapple onto more than a few to make it past. But after we use this first one, there's actually a pretty useful skip we can do. It isn't super big, but by grappling and then hitting this bounce pad in the right way, we can conserve our speed and barely land on another bounce pad, which puts us over onto this wall. Where if we then walk off, we make it into the range to start the next part with only two grapples used. Here there's a lever that can be pushed down. Then after releasing the sackbots, we find this section where we need to throw them at the wall with the Grabinator. We actually have to do this a few times afterwards as well. If we go back to an earlier part in the level though, there's actually a pretty big skip we can do. By having a second player hold us, if we time a jump out of their hands as they hit the bounce pad, we can get launched all the way up here, so we can then just barely fall out of bounds. Now we just take the correct route to have the final doors open. Now we can finish with only one Grabinator use and two grapples. There isn't any power-ups in Pipe Dreams, but there's a few times where we're meant to rescue some sackbots from cages. So after we completely ignore them, we can actually run through this level really easily. The only thing is that we need to grab this sponge to reach the top of this part. Then later there are some stairs that need to be pulled out. And then finally we pull this lever to lower the bridge. There are no more problems in our way after this, letting us finish with three grabs. At the start of Bank for Buck, there's a couple of walls that can only be passed by throwing bombs at them. So we'll take two Grabinator users for these. But at the third obstacle, we can pull a Boomtown by sliding up this wall to completely skip that section. But afterwards we need to throw another bomb to get past this wall, where we then use another bomb as a zipline. After though, we can reach the level link as intended without any additional grabs, our total at the moment being three Grabinator throws and one grab. Part 2 has more sackbots we should save, but we can just ignore them again. But what we can't avoid are these boxes which attract them, since they also open doors for us. We need to grab the levers for the second and third boxes because of how they're positioned. But for the fourth one, there's just enough room to get a jump to pull the lever and activate the bounce pads, where this is then followed by another bomb zip line. After now getting the Grabinator, we need to throw a bomb to get past this wall. This lever has to be grabbed, and then we're meant to throw another for the next part too. But rolling a bomb over lets us get a jump high enough to go completely behind the wall. That or we can just blow ourselves up. The next boxes can be skipped, then we land on the lever for the last one. After taking one final zipline and blowing up this wall, we can run to the end and finish the level with 6 grabs and 4 grabinator holds. Waste disposal starts easy until we need to grab this sponge to cross the gap. Then after grabbing another sponge, we meet with some sackbots that we're meant to swing off of to get over this pit that's too big to jump. But we're actually going to backtrack again, and use one of the sponges that we already grabbed to do another skip. Back at this area, for some reason, if we have another player go ahead and grab the sponge to activate the next checkpoint, it removes the fire and a lot of the level that's to the left of our first player, giving us the option to run off the edge to land out of bounds. Then after running to the right for a good 40 seconds, we reach the end of the platform, and we can jump back and bounce to a much later part in the level. Now to finish off, instead of grabbing onto these sponges to make it across, we can simply just stand on top of them as they get lifted both times. Now there's another sackbot section, we can save them easily, but now we're expected to swing from them again. Except this time, these gaps are just barely the right size to get a jump that clears them, letting us now finish with only two grabs. Foul play has a lot of spots to use the grappling hook, but thankfully we're given the option to run on the ground. That is until we reach these two walls, where we're forced to use the grappling hook to move them, since there's not enough room to get over either of them. After this we actually lose the grappling hook, and there aren't any more obstacles in our way, so we can finish this one with a total of two grapples. Avalonia finally gives us our first controlinator, and straight away we need to use a grab to spawn the rabbit. We can actually make it pretty far without the R1 function, but eventually there's a wall that requires us to use it. Back to before we spawned the rabbit, we can actually take one of these blocks all the way back to the left, where it's then possible to get a jump onto the transporter, letting us fall completely out of bounds. Now we can run left and get back in bounds at a certain spot, and we'll be right at the spawn point for the final vehicle, the hamster. After we spawn it with a grab, we do have to use its R1 function a total of 11 times to get through the barriers though, but we can go through multiple if they're close enough together. But now we can finish with one grab and 11 controlinator actions. There is a skip that also avoids the hamster as well, but it requires a sticker that activates the race kit at the start, which we don't have since it's a new save file and you don't obtain it until later in the world. Got the Hump is probably a lot of people's least favourite level, since it's just a 6 minute auto scroller. But you are on a controlinator the entire time, so we'll have a look at it. 
The only real option we have while on the camel is to shoot its projectile, which actually uses the X button. The R1 button isn't involved in this level at all, so we can finish with zero actions. The Suckbot Redemption is another controlinator level, except this time we're controlling these bees, whose main job is to pick up and move these Suckbots using the R1 button. To get them across the gap, we can crush one of them so it respawns and lands on top of our bee. Except for some reason it's made out of slippery material, so the Suckbot just falls off when we try to move. This is where a second player comes in. By using another bee, we can get the Suckbot in between them, and then carry it across. It's extremely hard, but this can theoretically be done for every part that the Suckbots are carried for, even at this vertical tunnel, and at the raining debris, as well as the part afterwards. At the conveyor belt though, it's enough to just knock them over to the right as they're spawning, and for the parts where we grab onto the platforms and the boxes, it's easy enough to use the bee's body to move them, finishing the level with zero controlinator actions. Like the camel level, Flying in the face of danger is another auto-scroller where we pilot a controlinator which shoots a projectile using the X button. This level doesn't have any uses for pressing R1. And neither does the next level. Huge Peril for Huge Spaceship is exactly like the previous, except this time it's a boss fight, completing this level with zero actions. Now we can start the second last world with Up and Atom. And it's another controlinator auto-scroller. This time though we don't even have a projectile, it's just dodging obstacles. So zero actions for this one too. Finally though, we have another interesting level, with fireflies when you're having fun. The star can be navigated through pretty easily, but upon getting the grappling hook, we need to use one of the fireflies to get past here. For the next part though, we're able to carefully jump across all of them, then to ascend the next section, we only need to grapple onto two of the five sponges, leading to part two of this level. The first couple of parts are just platforming, until getting to this part, which only starts moving until we grapple onto it. Then once we reach the top, there's a lot of sponges we would normally be grappling onto, but by timing it properly, we only need to use two to make it across. The same pretty much applies to the next part too, where we can skip most sponges, but we need to grab the very last one to make it out. But afterwards we can get up the last part, and finish the level with seven grapples. 24 levels in and we're only just getting our second creatinator, with Patience are a virtue, where we can constantly shoot water by holding the R1 button. Because of this, we can clear every single obstacle in this level with a single creatinator action. That is if it wasn't for this cutscene, which completely disables our controls for a few seconds, forcing us to start a second action once it's over. But apart from this, we can make it all the way to the end while spraying water the entire time, finishing with two actions. The next level is a very similar case, where we're given the same power up and some of the same obstacles. There's no grabbing in this level or anything, so we can beat it just by constantly firing water. Except this time there are three cutscenes which disable our controls. So once we finish the boss fight, we can end the level with four actions in total. The final level of this world is probably the most interesting. Invasion of the Body Invaders has us in another controlinator, where our main ability is grabbing and throwing these white blood cells at a projectile using the R1 button. There's a couple of walls at the start that we would normally use multiple throws to break, but after we initially grab it, we can actually push ourselves against a wall which is enough to force the cell out of our grasp, where it has the same effect as being released, letting us destroy the walls while holding R1 the entire time. The same can be done for the next wall, or it can just be pushed past, where we then head into the boss fight. The fight starts with a cutscene that disables our controls, so we'll be needing to count another action to defeat it. But once we start, we can use the strategy from before by using the walls to fire the projectile, defeating the boss, which does take a while because of our limited health, since dying also causes us to use another controlinator action. Once we do it though, we can finish the level with only two actions. We can now start the final world of the game with set the controls for the heart of the Negativatron, which has two parts. The first part is pretty short, and all it has is a few levers we can push with our bodies. Then the second part starts us off with mostly a lot of platforming, with no power-ups, where the gravity then turns down. We can keep going until reaching a spinning wheel. Thankfully we can get on top of it though and jump across. This lever is pretty high up, but a jump is able to just barely get on top of it so we can keep going. After some more platforming there's another circle of bubble wrap, but we can't go over it this time because of the electricity, so we're going to be grabbing it unfortunately. Then once we jump across some more platforms, there's another one that we need to grab. Shortly after though, we can finish off the level with the controlinator, which uses the X button to operate, so we can finish the next section without worry, completing the level in two grabs. Pretty much all of the first half of Full Metal Rabbit involves picking up and throwing bombs with the Grabinator, 
We can't get around any of the enemies, so we'll defeat the first four with one bomb each, but then use three for the next one because of how tall it is. After this, there's some normal platforming followed by another bomb throw. Then this section is pretty much repeated. So we're up to nine grabinator throws so far. Both of these enemies are defeated using one grab each. Then we can head into the second part, where we get given a controllinator after using another grab to spawn it. There's no skip for this rabbit, but for its slam attack, we can hold R1 the entire time to get several uses out of it, since our controls are never actually being disabled. Getting us through the rest with only one controllinator action, we just need to make these jumps that are a bit difficult, since we're being forced downwards the entire time, while also being careful to not die. Finishing the level with a total of 9 grabinator holds, 3 grabs and 1 controllinator action. Where in the world is Avalon Centrifuge is going to be another difficult level, as it's heavily dependent on the grappling hook. It's also pretty linear, so we won't be finding many skips. We're going to be grabbing the first B at the start, where we can then jump over the fire. Now that we have the sackbots, we need to lower both of the bridges here using a grapple for each one, and then another so that they can defeat the enemy, but thankfully we can get to the next one's brain ourselves. Here we have another bridge to lower, followed by grappling onto another B to make it up here, where afterwards we can kill both of these enemies without any grapples. The next enemy is the same again, but we need to use another grapple to get high enough to kill the next two. We can defeat the final enemy for the first part simply by jumping onto it to get across, where we then enter the level link with seven grapples. To start the second part, we grapple onto the elevator to make it start moving, then we can defeat one of the enemies with the same grapple, then death abuse to reach the second one. The next enemies are too far to the sides to reach from the checkpoint, so we'll use two grapples to defeat these ones. But the last ones are close enough to be killed by death abusing and jumping from the checkpoint, but afterwards we need to use another grapple to get back up. Sadly the enemy here requires two hold grabs, where we then head into the final area. Both of these gaps are jumped across, then the bee can be landed on, which messes up the camera for some reason. The next bee needs to be grabbed to get up to the next part as it becomes midnight so you get the trophy. Then inside one more grab is used on the wheel. Finally we can push the level with our body and defeat the robot, or we can just skip it entirely if that's too hard. But regardless, we can now finish with 15 grapples. After all that, Flight of the Bumblebees is a pretty easy level since it's just another controllinator autoscroller, where we use X to fire our projectile. So once we defeat the boss at the end, we can finish with zero actions. And now we've reached into the heart of the Negativitron, the very last level, which is the culmination of everything that we've learnt about the power-ups up to this point. So let's see what it can throw at us. At the start we're immediately put into a controllinator driving a hamster, except this time there aren't any walls for us to break through and we can finish the first phase without needing the R1 button. The second phase is the grappling hook section, where there's actually enough platforms to make it through without needing to grapple at all. Even though Clive and Avalon seem like they're deliberately trying to kill us sometimes, we can take a few deaths if we need to though. After this we can head into the final phase of the level, which makes us use the Grabinator to throw cakes at the Negativitron's brains, which sadly there are four of. But surprisingly, we've actually got a partial skip for this. Once we get the cake, if we spawn a second player and then immediately destroy the first brain, the second player won't be able to land in the arena because the boss is in the way. But instead, they're actually able to pop each new brain as soon as it spawns, letting us defeat the boss with only one cake. We destroy its final brain, and finish the entire level with only one Grabinator throw. With the story now completed, let's take a look at what we've achieved. This game had both a lot of levels that were extremely easy, either because they were just an auto-scroller, or needed very little creativity to pass as well as levels that needed a lot of different strategies and skips to get our count as low as possible. But overall, how many R1 actions does it take to beat Little Big Planet 2? 125, which came from 20 grabs, 52 grapples, 25 grabinator uses, 14 creatinator actions, and another 14 controllinator uses. This kind of shows pretty well how much more the grappling hook is used throughout the game compared to any other power-up, which I think is understandable because of how useful it is. But it's also disappointing for our challenge, since it was used more than double the number of times compared to anything else. But regardless, this was quite fun to complete. It's been nice being able to explore a game that's more complex like this one is. I hope there'll be more Little Big Planet 2 challenges in the future, but whatever happens, I'll see you next time.